Welcome back to The Deep Dive. We know how overwhelming information can be these days. So much noise, right? Our goal here is simple, really. We cut through it all to bring you the crucial insights um, straight from the source, helping you get properly informed without feeling buried. Today, we're diving into something pretty significant in HIV prevention. It could really change things. Imagine, instead of a daily pill, just one pill, once a month for PIP. That's what we're looking at today, based on some exciting research from the International AIDS Society meeting in Kigali, specifically Merck's phase two results for their uh, experimental drug, MK8527. Yeah, and this is exciting because it tackles a really persistent problem head on. We're talking about adherence, yeah. keeping up with daily medication. It sounds simple, but in reality, taking a pill every single day perfectly is, well, it's hard for a lot of people. So this idea of a monthly oral PAP pre-exposure prophylaxis aims right at solving those, you know, adherence shortcomings. It could be huge. Okay, let's break that down. A monthly oral PEP. That's a massive shift from the daily routine many people know. And this drug, MK8527 from Merck, just showed positive phase two results. That's the step before the really big trials, right? Exactly. And that monthly part, you really can't overstate how much easier that could make things for people. Yeah. Think about it. Less daily burden, maybe less stigma in some situations, just simpler. Dr. Kenneth Mayer from Harvard, who led this study, he highlighted this exact issue. Those adherence shortcomings with daily pills, they're real. Yeah. It's not about lack of effort sometimes. It's just life gets in the way. A monthly pill could fundamentally change the game for making prevention work long term for more people. It definitely sounds promising on the surface. So the big question then is, okay, what did these phase two results actually show? Let's get into the data. Right. So the study led by Dr. Mayer was pretty well structured. They tested three different doses, three milligrams, six milligrams, and 12 milligrams. See how the drug performs at different levels. They had about 100 participants for each of those doses, plus around 50 people in a placebo group that's key for comparison. These were all adults who were considered to have a low likelihood of getting HIV. And it wasn't just in one place. It was conducted in the U.S., South Africa, and Israel, although most participants were American. And people took the pill, or the placebo, once a month for six months. So a decent amount of time to see what happens. Okay. And when you talk about new drugs, safety is always like the first thing on everyone's mind. What did they find? Any red flags? That's the critical point, yeah. And the results were interesting. Need a little unpacking, though. They did report that about two-thirds of the people taking MK8527 had some kind of adverse event, a side effect. Two thirds, that sounds high. It does initially, but here's the crucial bit. Most of these side effects were mild. And importantly, the same proportion, about two thirds of people in the placebo group also reported adverse events. Oh, okay, so that suggests maybe it wasn't all the drug itself. Exactly, it points towards many of these being sort of background noise, things that happen anyway. Yeah. That's actually a good sign. Now, looking at serious adverse events, there was only one potentially linked to the drug. It was a spontaneous abortion at six weeks. But Dr. Mayer noted the person had a history of complications, so the link isn't entirely clear-cut. Right. Context matters there. Definitely. And two people did stop the study because of severe side effects. Oh. One was a drop in CD4 counts. Those are important immune cells. Mm -hmm. The other was something called hypoesthesia, basically numbness. The most common things reported that might be drug-related were headache, nausea, maybe those CD4 count drops again. Yeah. But crucially, the percentage of people experiencing these was similar to the placebo group. So overall, the safety profile looked pretty reassuring at this stage. And what's really fascinating, scientifically, is the pharmacokinetics. That's how the drug behaves in the body. Right, like how long it lasts. Precisely. Can one pill really provide protection for a whole month? That's the challenge. The data showed what's called proportionality to a higher dose meant higher drug levels in the blood. That's expected. But the really key finding, it indicated the drug levels stayed high enough, consistently enough, to likely prevent HIV infection over that entire month. Wow. Okay, so the science seems to back up the monthly idea. Yeah, that pharmacokinetic data is really the foundation supporting this whole concept. It makes it seem genuinely viable. So phase two looks promising. Safety seems manageable. The drug levels look good for monthly dosing. What's the next step for MK8527 then? Well, the next logical step, and what Merck is doing, is moving into phase three trials. These are much larger studies. They've got two big ones planned. The first is called Expressive 10. This one's focused specifically on adolescent girls and young women in Kenya, South Africa, and Uganda. That's a really important group. Hugely important. Young women in those regions bear a disproportionate burden of new HIV infections. So targeting prevention there is critical. 
Uh, interestingly, the details for that one aren't up on the main clinical trials website yet, clinicaltrials.gov, but the focus is clear. Then there's Expressive 11. This one's massive. It's going to compare an 11 milligram dose of MK8527 directly against Truvada, the daily pill many people currently use for pre-PP. Ah, head-to-head -head comparison. Exactly. And it's going global, planned for 16 countries. This gives them really broad data on how it stacks up against the current standard across diverse populations. And the info for this one is on clinicaltrials.gov. 16 countries, that's a huge undertaking. It really shows they're aiming for a global solution, testing it in all sorts of different settings and populations. Absolutely. Running trials like that is complex, you know, dealing with different regulations, healthcare systems, cultures, but the payoff is huge. If it works, you have much more confidence that it will be effective and safe for a wide range of people globally. That's essential for something like HIV prevention. So let's zoom out a bit. How does this potential monthly pill fit into the bigger picture of HIV prevention right now? We've seen other advances lately too. Yeah, it's a good question because the landscape has been changing. For a while, oral PAP, the daily pills, were kind of overshadowed by the buzz around long-acting injectables. You've got Gilead Selena Capavir that just got FDA approval last month. That's a six-month shot. Six months? Wow. Yeah. And VV's Gabagravir, approved back in late 2021, that's an injection every two months. So these injectables offer even less frequent dosing, which is revolutionary for some. But and this is the point Dr. Mayer made. It raises the question, why do we need another option like a monthly pill? Right, if you have shots. Well, because choice matters a lot. Some people just don't want shots. Maybe it's clinic visits, maybe it's needles, maybe it's privacy. Taking a pill at home is different. And while daily pills work great if you take them perfectly, we come back to that adherence challenge. So this monthly oral option, it kind of slots neatly in between. It's oral, self-administered, discreet, but much less frequent than daily. It fills a gap. And this aligns perfectly with what the World Health Organization is saying now. Their latest recommendations really stress the importance of having multiple pre-EP options available. They cite research showing people are much more likely to actually use pre-EP and stick with it when they can choose the method that best fits their life. It's not one size fits all. That makes a lot of sense. So connecting this back to the, well, the global challenge, despite these amazing tools, we're still facing hurdles, aren't we? We really are. You know, the dream is still an effective HIV vaccine, but decades of research haven't delivered that yet. So PIEP in all its forms is absolutely crucial for trying to reduce new infections. And there's a worrying trend after years of steady decline. The number of new HIV infections globally has kind of plateaued recently, stopped well, falling. Plateaued? That's not good news. No, it's a serious concern. It suggests that even with the tools we have, we're not reaching everyone effectively. It highlights issues like access, awareness, stigma, and yes, adherence again. That's why having more user-friendly options, like potentially this monthly pill, is so important. It can be a key tool to help overcome some of those barriers and get that downward trend going again. So wrapping this up, what's the main thing for you, our listeners, to take away from this deep dive? It seems like this potential monthly oral pre-AP could be a really big deal for tackling that adherence problem, offering more choice, making protection potentially easier for more people, especially now we know global infection rates aren't dropping like they used to. Exactly. And then maybe the final thought to leave you with is this. Think about what choice really means in healthcare. Innovations like a monthly pill aren't just about convenience. They're about fundamentally changing how public health works by offering options that fit into real lives. How much more empowered do people feel to manage their health when they have tools that actually work for them in their circumstances? It might be more profound than we even realize yet. That's a really powerful point to consider. It's about adapting the medicine to the person, not just the other way around. Well, thank you for joining us today as we explored this exciting development in HIV prevention. We hope you found it insightful. Keep exploring, keep questioning, and we'll catch you on the next Deep Dive.